to fall off. But guess what? God is a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. He said, when the enemy comes in like a flood, he said, I will lift up a standard against him. He said, a devil will come in one way and he'll flee seven ways. I'm trying to get your praise shout on because many of you have got your head down and you got your arms folded and you say, I don't know what to do. If you don't know what to do, begin to praise God. That's what you need to do. Lord, I don't know where I'm at. I don't know where you're taking me, but I thank you for being my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may not have three fantastic meals a day, but thank God for that one you do get. You may have to hitchhike to where you go, but thank God somebody stopping picking you up. You may be three, I'm three months behind in your bill, but thank God you still got a place to live. <laughs> Oh, Pastor, that's not a good Christian testimony. I know. That's the way the world look at it. That was an old, old sister who doctors told that she was dying with cancer. Told her she had, she had three months to live. They went to the house to interview her, expecting her to be all half crazy in the head. And the news reporter went to her house Knocked on the door, and this old grandma opened the door and said, well, praise the Lord. She said, I come to see Miss, and named her, and she said, I'm the one. She said, you're the one that got cancer? You're the one that's going to die in three months? She said, glory, hallelujah, I'm going home in three months. She said, I come to interview you. They sat down and started the interview, and, and she started asking about her life, and old grandma began to testify about how good God has been. You see, we all need to have a testimony about how good God been to us. Not, not to somebody else, but to us. I want to tell you about how God kept my children from, from, from having a fever. I want to tell you how God has kept me from a car wreck. I want to thank the Lord for him providing for me on my table. I want to thank the Lord for giving me clothes on my back. I want to thank the Lord for being in my right mind. I want to thank the Lord for keeping me out of jail, out of prison. I want to thank the Lord. That's my testimony. And so this old grandmama sort of tell this lady about how good God has been to her. It's nothing like an old sanctified grandmama who knows she's going home and she got a testimony to tell. She said, girl, let me tell you about how good God been to me. She said, the doctors told me two years ago that I was going to die in three months and I'm still here today. She said, I just didn't get into a corner and be quiet. She said, I was telling everybody that I could reach them, that Jesus Christ is coming soon. Get right. We allow our situations to hinder us from doing the will of God. God, if I, if I get this, God, you know, I'll be a better witness for you. You're a witness for God where you are right now, either good or bad. And the lady started writing. And the grandmama looked at her and she said, Honey, let me ask you a question. She said, yes, ma'am. Do you know Jesus as Lord and as Savior? She said, well, ma'am, I, I, I go to church. She said, that's not what I asked you, honey. She said, do you know Jesus as Lord and as Savior? And the newspaper reporter said, well, not as you know him. And she said, you know, sister, there's only one way to know the Lord. And that's Jesus Christ lives in your heart and in your life. And before that newspaper later left that house, Guess what? A new name had been written in the Lamb Book of Life. If, if, you don't, if you don't get them the first time, keep after them. If you don't get it the second time, keep after them. If your children start running from God, mama, let me tell you how you can get them. Get on their bed, lay your hands on their pillow, and say, devil, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You're not taking my son to hell. You're not taking my daughter to hell. You're not taking my husband to hell. But by the grace of God, they are coming in and standing on that prayer and believe God, and God will do the rest. Somebody say hallelujah. Because if, it, if, if God wasn't for us, none of us would be here right now. That devil out there is too smart for us. But guess what? He's a dummy compared to our Father, our God, and our Savior. Hallelujah. Amen. So Paul said, everybody left me. Man, everybody.
everybody I could count on left me, had excuses. Nobody wanted to be around me. He said, Lord, don't lay it to their charge because we get mad with folks sometimes. You know, they could have gave me a ride. They didn't give me no ride. They know my situation, but they didn't do nothing about it. But Paul said, God, don't lay it to their charge. You see, God got you where you are to prove you. Do you really, do you really love him when you're up on that mountaintop? Because being in church, folk raise their head and say, oh, God, you're so good. Thank you, Jesus. But when your valley experience come, oh, where's the praise there? But Paul said, I don't, Lord, don't lay it to their charge. And as Paul began to praise God and thank God and began to realize where he heals in God and what the Lord can do in his life, the next verse said, notwithstanding, nevertheless, in spite of, God strengthened me. If he's for you, who shall be against you? If he's by your side, you're going to make it. You may have toiled all night long and caught nothing. But when the Lord stepped off into the boat, you will catch some fish. Can somebody identify with what I'm talking about? If the Lord is for you, if the Lord is for you, if God is on your side, if God is working things out, everything will be all right. He said, Lord, strengthen me. He said, so that the message of the gospel may go forth from my mouth. I want other folks to hear about how good God is. I don't want my situation to hinder me from lifting up the name of Jesus Christ. I don't want what I'm going through to, to cause me to detour. But I want to stay on the battlefield. That old gospel song is said, Well, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I am. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, I promise him that I, oh, I will serve him till I die. Oh, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And folks, when you're on the battlefield, you're going to get shot and wounded. Don't expect just because you're a child of God and you love Jesus Christ that everything is going to go well all the time. The Bible said tribulation work in patience and patience experience and experience hope. Hallelujah. God got to put you into the fire in order to get you ready to do something for him. There's nothing, nothing worse than an overweight Christian. <laughs> oh, but God, he strengthened Paul. He said, he said, Lord, strengthen me that I may be able to preach the gospel. He said, the Lord deliver me out of the mouth of the lion. God had brought you out of some situation. That devil wanted to destroy you. Oh, but God, mankind had, had, had hatched their plans for your destruction. But God said, that's my child you're messing with. And I'm only going to let you go so far, devil, and that's it. If you begin to praise God where you are, God will take you to the other side. And maybe some of you are thinking in your mind, well, you can say that because you have this and how and you have that. And that's why you can say that. Honey, let me tell you something. I can praise God because I've been to the point of nothing but the Lord. That was it. All I had was the Lord, but that's enough. I said that's enough. If you got your hand in God's hand, that is enough. The psalmist said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy, joy, joy coming in the morning. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, joy. Joy cometh in the morning. Hallelujah. Your morning is when you realize that God Almighty has not forgot about you. No matter what you've gone through, no matter what you're facing, God still has everything under control. God still is working things out. God still is doing great and mighty things. God still is for you. And if he's for you, who shall be against you? Praise the Lord. Man. It makes you almost feel sorry for the devil. Hallelujah. Knowing that God is for us. Praise the Lord. Oh, glory to God. Don't that make you feel better to know that God is for you? You may be broke, busted, and disgusted, but God still is for you. You may have nothing, but God is still for you. 
You may be at a loss at wit's end, not knowing what to do, but God is still for you. Oh, Pastor, how am I going to make it? The Word said, if I'm for you, who should be against you? The Word says that I'm your provider. The Word says that I'm your joy. The Word says that neither height nor depth nor principalities, nor powers, nor rulers, nor dominions, nor things in the earth, nor things under the earth shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. The Word, in the beginning, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He made all things, and there was nothing made.